No, you know, I think when you write, you are, um, uh, you have a kind of uh, imaginary reader in your head, and I think of it like a pie chart. I'm very computer savvy. I think of it, you know, as somebody, this reader of yours is made up, a large part of this reader is yourself, because there's so many people asking questions inside you. And then there are also people who you admire very much. Some of them may be people you've never set eyes on. Some might be from other parts of the world. They might have lived at another time. It might be a writer, you know, from several centuries back whom you admire very much. So you actually have this composite reader you're writing to. And you're not worrying about nationality. And as for culture, I never use the word carelessly. You know, if you have grown up as we have, um, uh, learning, uh, when I was eight years old, 10 years old, um, I spoke a mixture of two Indian languages at home because my parents speak different Indian languages. So I spoke a hybrid version. I went to an English medium school. I had to learn Hindi, which was the national language, is the national language, one of the national languages. I had to learn the state language, Marathi, and for some reason I had French as well. Now, what this means is that um, the fact that language is a slippery thing, that culture is a slippery thing, and it can never be single or it can never be homogenous, is brought home to you. It's not something you have to learn. It's something you almost take for granted. So I, I think it's impossible to, to read some, you know, something from somewhere else. The little things that might trip you up when I was very, when I was a little girl and I read an American novel and I, I was horrified that they were all eating hot dogs, you know. So, but these are details. It doesn't stop you from uh, appreciating the work or disliking it or responding to it intelligently. So.